Um, so this is a new product by Microsoft, basically. Uh, it's a successor for Wunderlist. You may know this, and you should know this if you are from Berlin. My name is Alex. I'm working as a senior engineer in Microsoft. And also, we started um, a community with my friends to help engineers grow and developers develop themselves. So basically, career help and self-development and how to live with your team in your environment and all of that, and how to basically start thinking about people and not the code and the problems you solve for people and not for the code. And then you can find me online on GitHub, for example, or on Twitter. Um, I usually troll people on Twitter, so be aware. If you are there, then you may be the target of my trolling. Um, then let's talk about Microsoft To-Do. So To-Do apps should be pretty straightforward and easy. We all know To-Do MVC. Our To-Do app has 2,000 tests just on the front-end part. And then it passes in 15 seconds, which is like a small To-Do app, so that you know. And then we have React, Redux, uh, Redux sections, and other stuff inside, which is quite interesting, but we won't cover today. I will talk shortly about one thing. I'm really sorry to be standing between you and food, so I will be really short. We have several design principles which we put into our architecture first. And the thing you need to put attention to is just that we prioritize composability. It means that we want to build things and never change them. We just want to combine them. And then we prioritize maintenance and changeability of our code base and our product. We need to experiment a lot. We need to move things around. And this should take minutes and not days and not any time more. So those are two basic things which forced us to single direction, which I will just cover a bit with one single thing, which is called ICC, which is independently connected components. Do any one of you have any idea what it can be? Just raise your hand if you have any idea. OK, I see. You are like, what is that, Alex? Like, what is ICC? You come up with this thing. Um, not really, but partially. So what we do is we connect every single tiny React component to the Redux store directly. There is no data passing from parents to children, and that's it. This thing changes everything for us. It makes your components independent from the context where they put. You can take the button, put it anywhere in your markup. It'll, it will still work the same way. And this kind of approach guarantees that you can change your system and you can stop thinking about whether you break something or not. All the components are independent. They can connect it directly. They have special domain-specific names, meaning that we don't have components which are called containers. We have a component which is called task list. And you exactly know where to find this thing and what it will be in your UI. Unfortunately, we don't have storybooks yet. We are like a team of five people, and we have like 15 issues. And 15 features been in development at the same time. It's really hard to develop these things in a nice way, but we are trying our best. So you may be wondering, like, how is it possible to connect everything, right? And then, like, what's about performance? Like, how do you actually connect all the tiny pieces? It should be crazy, right? And I mean, we literally connect every checkbox separately to the Redux store. And everything is stored in Redux store. Like, our UI data, our business data, everything is there. So we actually measured the performance, because this is the first question, like whether you can do this or not. In our case, the state passing is when you're hoisting the whole state to the parent and then passing it down using only primitive values, like you are spreading your models. If there is a task dot checked, right, or completed, you just pass completed Boolean to the React itself, to the interface of React, to the props. It gives you the best speed, right? In our case, the approach when we have a single list with tons of components gives less than 10% performance boost. And this is our hot critical path for rendering and everything. This is basically your list of tasks, which can be 10,000 items, right? If we, if we just use this list with all the tasks inside and all the logic, we have 50 selectors inside from reselect. It's basically 50 different properties get from the store, right? And then 25 event handlers for a single task to show all the data and have all the interactions. If you put it in a single file, it's completely unmaintainable. And we have tried this. Like, I made a small experiment on my colleagues, and I unintentionally made a mistake in refactoring this thing to measure the performance. I missed a single interaction, and no one can find it in the code base. Like, we try it, we spend some time trying to figure out what's missing because, like, we cannot do some things with the task. And we cannot find it because it's like a huge file with huge complexity. So we split all those things. And in our case, it's 10% performance. And so that you understand, for a list of 500 components, where every component is a superset of 20 other components for a single task, uh, we get something like 50 milliseconds 
win on this, on loading of all this thing and rendering of all this thing. So it's not worth changing our maintenance, exchanging it for this kind of performance gain. Because as soon as we use the virtualized list and we show you just the data you are looking at, this performance benefit is like 10 milliseconds. So this problem does not exist. And this is our hot critical path. There are other teams who use this approach. Product Hunt, for example, uses this approach. And several teams in Minsk and Belarus uses this approach. But I've been talking to other people on meetups about this, and not much people actually have considered it as a viable approach. So just an example, because I should show some code on coding conference, right? We have uh, all components in like its own separate folder. And then it basically has everything inside, like the component markup, the styles, the connect function, basically, from Redux Connect. You can connect this component to any other storage or whatever you want, because it's separated. And you have an index. It's very close to Docs, if you know those. It has an index which exports all the things and puts them together. So in our case, a developer can open the folder of all the components. If he knows what is uh, our designer is talking about, like add task component, right? He can directly find it, and he doesn't need to know what's inside. He can use this component, just import it using the component slash add task, and that's it. And it's ready to use. The only thing we pass is the ID of the entity you've been connected to. So if you have a list of tasks, you pass just the list of IDs to the list component, and that's it. The tasks will grab their own data based on their own ID. So this thing leads us to um, a composable store, because you cannot make those things separated if you don't have a normalized store, where your directory structure kind of maps the structure in your Redux dev tools. And then eventually, with this approach, you will come to the question, like, what, why don't I have a relational database there? Because my store is normalized. I should probably have queries instead of reselect. I should probably have transactions instead of sagas, right? And do these things in a bit different way. Also, you may notice that in this case, like your Redux store, if it's representing a single feature in your interface, is a state machine. So probably there is a way to model those state machines in an easier way. And you don't need to describe all the data and all the things happening to this thing. And then you may be familiar with commander pattern, or you actually may be familiar with microservices, right? Does it ring any bell? And then functional approach to microservices, and CQRS, things like that. If it does ring any bell, then we are kind of using the microservices approach on our front end, where our components are microservices, and they're functional. We are separating the reads when you query the data and writes. When you create something using actions, in two different abstractions. They are not mixed. Uh, and this thing helps us to parallelize the whole UI, uh, I mean the development of the UI. And then it helps to integrate it. We treat our Redux store not only as a database, but also as an integration bus. So we can put other things in middlewares, for example, and integrate it in our app. And we can integrate our app in other apps as well, because integration is the huge part for us. And if you want more details, I will be talking about this in details on this Wednesday on Facebook Development Circle Meetup. You can follow me and ask me to go to any other meetup. I will be happy to just talk here in Berlin about this topic because it's quite interesting. And then there is a GitHub repo which shows how you can refactor the to-do MVC example which comes with Redux to this approach. The main branch shows just the independently connected components and doesn't show other patterns. But there is a lot of them inside, and we will experiment with other things in this repo. So you can just go there and have a look. And this thing has around 10 different exercises you can do on top of the repo to see how this approach scales. Like you need to add another list into do MVC. You need to create some interactions between the lists, or you need to create some projections of your list. This is one thing which is missing a lot when we just look at some straightforward app. You need interactions between those things, and you need to see how it scales complexity-wise. So if you have any questions, I'm here for the whole day. Find me and ask me those questions. Thank you so much.